It is a privilege to be joined today on the summit by Coach Dustin Hayda of the Southern Nazarene Crimson Storm. Coach, 18 to 17. I know that's going to be a number or a pair of numbers in that order that you're going to remember forever. And you probably felt like it, it took forever to get to that point total over the course of the evening. On Thursday night, Southern Nazarene did something incredible and upset the number three team in the country. It was a then 0-8 Southern Nazarene team that took down a then 8-0 Washita Baptist team in Arkadelphia, no less. You get the upset on the road. Coach, first off, congratulations on the win, and tell us a little bit about that. Thank you so much. And those, those points were hard to come by, which is good. It was a, such a defensive battle and a back and forth, back and forth and in a big time environment versus a really talented uh, team and a, and a really good program. So just for our guys to stay in the fight and, and believe in what we've been telling them for a really long time and um, was really valuable for our program. And, and we saw the fruits of that when the, when the clock hit zeros. Absolutely, Coach. It, it's one of the biggest upsets, uh, statistically at least, 0-8, 8-0, and, and, and uh, a top-five program like Washita is. And uh, I, I would imagine in Division II history, definitely within the, in the last quarter of a century. And so, again, congratulations on the win. You know, I, I hear people say you can't do it with field goals. Field, goal, field goals aren't going to get it done. You need touchdowns to win. Well, you did actually get a touchdown later on, but it was the field goals – that kept you in it. Cameron Van Pruyen, four for four on the night, and they just got progressively harder. He had a 30-yard field goal attempt, which was true, and then a 40-yard field goal, a 41-yard field goal, 43-yard field goal in the fourth quarter. You asked just a little bit more of him each time, Coach, but he came through. Yeah, it's a wacky deal. So uh, we lost a heartbreaker last week to East Central and had a chance to kick a, a long field goal into the win. Uh, but Cam was out with a groin last week. And so just going into this game, field goal was kind of a an iffy distance-wise. You know, pregame, I'm asking him, you know, where are you good from? He's giving me these. And, Coach, I, we probably got to be right about the 20 with the ball. Um, and <laughs> so for that to work out the way it did and, and for him to just get into a groove and get comfortable and be able to be relied on uh, was so remarkable for him. But he's a great kid and a great kicker. We just didn't know physically what that he had that in him that night and so uh what a great story for him and a night he'll always remember but when you're playing great defense um you you can do that and and we had great faith in our defense last night and so that gave us a little bit more freedom to as some would say settle for field goals um when you're playing a great team like washington you need points and mm -hmm. and when your defense is playing the way that ours was last night um, you take those points and, and we had a guy we could trust and, and felt good about it. Absolutely coach. And, and I agree with that. Uh, I, I, all of that, congratulations to, to Cameron also for being able to, to step up in, in that adversity. I want to talk about both those things a little bit later on, uh, the East central game and also your defense. Clearly the defense ha had a, a big part in this Bryson Evans last night, 15 for 29, better than 50% completion against a very tough Washita defense. And again, on the road, uh, one touchdown pass through a pick two, but the touchdown pass was from the 11 yard line, made its way to Dalen Smith. He took it just enough in for the score. I mean, reaching for that score there with 24 seconds left. It was a nine play touchdown drive that took you 72 yards down the field. Take us through the drive coach and, and also your thoughts on that, on that touchdown play. It's all a blur, but man, we, we had some guys that, that, uh, had some really gutsy catches on that drive. We had a, a really nice quarterback draw um, with some timeouts in our pocket. We knew we – and the two-minute timeout, we knew uh, that the playbook was kind of not limited. And really what set all that up is is we had protected well all night. And we had, we had had a good seven-man protection plan going into the game um, and really didn't need the seven-man protection scheme. So – when you're able to do that and protect a little bit, it was able to, uh, Bryson was able to get more comfortable and, and step into his throws and drive the football like we knew that he could. And, you know, previous, previous drives, I think, you know, we said, what were his stats? 
Uh, 15 for 29, 179. That was just a passing. Right. 15 for 70 or 29. And he had, he had four big drops. There were, there was four big drops, but the, the very redemptive thing about that on that last drive, you know, three of those guys that had big drops made huge plays. And so they never gave up on it. And, and, uh, they just kept making plays and they were really gutsy catches. They knew they were going to get struck. Um, and the collision was imminent and they, they went and made the play. And so that was really satisfying for those guys to get some redemption in that last, uh, in that last series. And, and Bryson just played a really gutsy game and, um, a game that was, you know, fairly error free. His pick was on the two point conversion, uh, which you want to talk about making your heart stop. Um, that play did, but, you know, he's just trying to make a play right there, and they were in a coverage we didn't expect and, and had a route that was really specific to a coverage that they weren't in. He was just trying to jam that one in there. So, you know, you take that one mistake away, and and uh, he had a really, really fine game, and, and it not gaudy stats by any means, um, but, man, you watch the tape. He, he was a gutsy, gutsy dude and uh, played as tough as, as he can and, and as as anybody could. So, I was so proud of him and and the way that he ended that for sure. And, and you know, in a game like this too, the first thing people are going to remember is the final score. I mean, they can look at that film later on and check out the stats. And, and as you mentioned, maybe not Gotti, but it was enough to get it done. And he did what he needed to do for his team. We're visiting with Coach Dustin Hayda from Southern Nazarene. The Crimson Storm earned one of the biggest upsets in Division Two, and definitely in recent memory and possibly in Division Two history. I encourage you, by the way, as we visit today here on the Summit on Midwest Sportsnet, please take the time to subscribe to the channel. We would appreciate that greatly. Coach, one of the things also, too, I mean, you've got a team that heading into this game was 0-8. Uh, you talked about East Central last week, and, and I think about that game, too, because you all were up 30-21 to 21 at the end of the third quarter, up nine points, fighting through that. It's a team that really that, that hasn't given up, and, and, and the Tigers – the Central Tigers this time came back, scored 10 points, and, and that included a 54-yard field goal with seven seconds left. And I know that had to be just kind of heartbreaking, too, to go, my goodness, what, what do we have to do to get a win? Well, you have to go to Arkadelphia, apparently, to get to, to get the win there in that. But uh, talk about that. The team didn't fold. They came back and really gave their all. And by the way, this is uh, a Thursday night game on top of that. I mean, they're just five days removed from the East Central game. Yeah, and it just speaks to the culture and resiliency that we that we've instilled in these guys, and that they've accepted and and really have just made it a part of them um, through the bad football. Um, I, I tell everybody that listen, man, we we had football problems, we didn't have cultural problems, and I'd rather sit here and fix football than have to fix culture. And when when you do have to focus on fixing football problems. And you're not wasting a lot of time fixing attitudes and effort and physicality and, and bad locker room, you can make progress and you and you've always got a chance. Um, as long as those guys are believing in what in what you're telling them. And and our guys have done that and they just hung in there. Um, they're great teammates. They're very, very good at blocking outside noise. Um, and when you're Owen Owen eight, you better be good at it and at blocking outside noise. And they understand that uh, their teammates are the only voices that matter. Um, and I know a lot of people say that, but when your team goes 0-8, you find out real quick if they believe that or not. And I think that's just what got us through. And, and our guys have never stopped fighting um, against anybody. Um, we just made critical errors in, in about every ball game we've played. And we were able to, to decrease a lot of those and, and just stay in the fight. Um, and so that was really satisfying to see those guys and, and for those guys to see the fruit of what we've been talking about and, and the culture that they've built, uh, win or loss. We're, we're always pretty much the same attitudinally. Um, and that's really what got us through as a team last night, for sure. You mentioned the defense and, and definitely that defense has to be mentioned in a game like this and where 18 points can win it. I mean, that, that, uh, there's a lot to be said about that. You held the number three team in the country to just 17 points, just 14 first downs, and coached just 260 yards of total offense. And this is an offense that can go off on people. So the, the fact that, that 18 points 
proved to be enough in this game what was huge and and it, what a statement for the defense you know it really was and and coach Sindel, our defensive coordinator on a short week um playing one of the the best schemes maybe in the country when you talk about utilization of of players and schemes looking the same uh a lot of different things look the same that they do um, he had an amazing game plan with personnel and with what groupings he wanted and, and what calls in those groupings. And it's a really an amazing feat uh, that he could get that done really with two, two days of practice. So we had a short, we kind of combined a Monday and Tuesday on that Monday. We had a, we had a normal kind of full team day on Tuesday and then we're traveling on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what a daunting task for Coach Sindel and, and his staff, and they did an outstanding job. And when you watch that game, our players were were dialed in. They communicated very well. Um, they tackled incredibly well, probably better than we have all season, and that may have been a big key to that. Uh, but we were in our fits um, for the most part. You take you take five run plays away uh, by Mr. Kendall, and and we've got those stats even look better. And, and that's just like taking away five plays. So we covered well. Um, you know, we did just enough in our pass rush to put some pressure and and make the quarterbacks do some things they didn't want to do. And so I can't say enough about those guys in a short week doing a lot of complex things uh, schematically. And then when you just put that in with the, the energy that they played with and really starting out first play of the game, sack fumble, um, and then things just start building momentum wise, although maybe slow, um, the momentum kept building and we never really lost belief in that. Um, if we just keep playing, th then it's going to break and it, and it eventually did. It was the 100th win in program history and what a milestone victory. I mean, again, it's one of those games that uh, the folks there in the program are going to remember for a long, long time to come. But coach, the 2024 season is not over with that victory and and still a little bit of opportunity to build uh, not only for next year, but to really do a little bit more this season with the team that you have right now. Two games remain on the schedule. You are going to be hosting Arkansas Monticello next week, and then you travel a short distance to Shawnee to take on rival Oklahoma Baptist in the season finale. Tell us a little bit about the the rest of this year. We know it'll be exciting. Monticello presents a lot of challenges uh, with their quarterback, and, and he's been giving guys fits for a really long time. And he's healthy late in the year, um, which is really good for them, and, and we better tackle. So um, they they present their own set of problems, and, and we'll deal with the next week as it comes. But, um, no, we're, we just – we want to just keep playing one week at a time and, and – Everybody always says that, but man, that's really what we're about. And and we're gonna we're gonna really soak in Thursday night's game and until Monday morning. Um, and then we're gonna move on and, and we're gonna go towards Monticello and and be able to enjoy senior night, hopefully, and give those guys a great memory to be made that night. But um no, I'm just so proud of them and and them staying in the fight is so big for us and um uh, we just want to we want to continue doing that and, and keep making memories as we go to the end of this thing. Well, coach, enjoy the weekend and you've earned it. Absolutely. You, your staff and the the players have earned it. The Southern Nazarene Crimson Storm, 1817 victors over Washita Baptist, the number 3 team in the country on the road no less picking up the big upset victory. Coach Dustin Hayter, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the summit. Again, congratulations. We mean it. Uh you, you all earned a, an incredible victory and we look forward to following the Crimson Storm for another couple of weeks this year. Thank you, man. I appreciate you having me on and and uh keep it rolling. <laughs>